Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to the second part of our exploration of the Book of Acts. And yesterday, I gave you a little bit of background to the author and the person or people to whom he was writing and some of the key themes. Uh, sometimes if you watch a, a serial on television, each episode begins with a kind of resume of the story so far. And really the first five verses of, Luke, of Acts, which we read yesterday, are Luke bringing us up to speed with what has already happened in preparation for what is about to come. And he's going to tell us about the ascension. You know, there are two accounts in Scripture of the ascension of Jesus, both of them written by Luke. Although, of course, it's referred to in different ways in other places in the New Testament. In John 13, when he's in the upper room, Jesus knows that he has come from the Father and is returning to the Father in glory. Paul, writing to the Philippians, says in that wonderful hymn in chapter 2 that God has exalted him to the highest place. And then the author of Hebrews begins by telling us that Jesus has now sat down at the right hand of the Father after providing purification for sin. And Luke tells us about the instructions which Jesus gives. And these include the command to be witnesses to him in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. And also a promise of the Holy Spirit. You know, it's sometimes said that the Acts of the Apostles could also be called the Acts of the Holy Spirit, because in pretty much every chapter of Acts, the Holy Spirit is going to play a major part. There's also a, a summary of the resurrection appearances and the 40 days after the resurrection which Jesus spent with his disciples. And just as in the Gospel, Luke's Gospel, there's a strong emphasis upon the bodily nature of the resurrection. Jesus is a real physical person. He eats with them, just as he ate with the two disciples on the road to Emmaus. Just as when he appears to the rest of the disciples, he eats a piece of broiled fish. And alongside the focus on the reality of Jesus' physical resurrection, there's the key theme of the apostolic preaching, the kingdom of God. That you remember had been Jesus' great theme, the kingdom is among you. And again, we're going to see the kingdom extending as we work our way through the book of Acts. And as I said in, in my first uh, devotional, it's really like the ripples that issue out if you throw a stone into a pond, the movement outwards from Jerusalem to the ends of the earth. But here we begin in Jerusalem. And with Jesus' instruction to them to remain in Jerusalem until they receive power from on high. Without the power of the Holy Spirit, the dynamic power of God, they're going to struggle. And then there's a comparison with and a contrast with the baptism of John. Like the baptism of John, this will be uh, the baptism of the Holy Spirit will be an overwhelming experience, a real drenching in the power of God. We'll see that when we come to chapter two. But Jesus is going to baptize them not with water, but with the Holy Spirit and with fire, with that elemental, powerful, purifying presence of God. And this is a promise that Jesus has made to them. Do you remember in John's Gospel, when he's in the upper room, uh, Jesus tells them that he's going to send another one, just like himself, the Holy Spirit, who will not only be with them, but will live in them. Incidentally, it may be that same upper room to which they return just before the day of Pentecost. It's a wonderful sealing of that promise, isn't it? And just to finish with three resources that Luke reminds us are available to them and to us. First of all, the Word of God. That's what Luke has written down for us, along with the others 
who were represented in the New Testament. And that word of God is so central, so foundational to all that we do. The presence of Jesus. He's with them bodily, but he's promised to be with us always, even to the end of the age. And we can be reassured that as we engage in mission, Jesus is with us. And then the Spirit who makes that presence real and who empowers us for mission. And my prayer today is that those three resources, the Word of God, the presence of Jesus and the power of the Holy Spirit, the wonderful Trinity, will be with you. God bless you.